Hello there. Hi, welcome to Joyful Business TV. I am Laura West. I'm the CEO and intuitive business coach at joyfulbusiness.com. And I'm so glad you're here. I've got someone I want to share with you that I think you're really going to love. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about Joyful Business and Joyful Business TV, and then we'll, we'll dive right in. Um, so for over 20 years, I have been working with coaches and consultants, conscious business owners, helping them to discover and claim their soul work. You know, that deeper work that um, only you are meant to do with your unique, beautiful brilliance and gifts and talents and expertise. Um, and, um, and that you're meant to work with certain people, but what I call your soul tribe. And that deeper work that you do, it changes lives. It changes lives. It creates that positive ripple in the world. And so we really focus here at Joyful Business on liberating your power, your voice, opening up that confidence and conviction in a way so that you can show up that feels natural. It feels like you are sharing your gifts with the world and it's a really positive thing. All right, so that's what we talk about here. And I want to bring someone to you, introduce someone to you that I think you really are going to enjoy. I feel like it's a big treat. Um, this is uh, a friend of mine that I've met a few years ago and a colleague, her name is Lisa Michaels. We're so glad that um, she's able to join us today. And she's gonna, I really think she's gonna get you thinking about business in a whole new way. So let me tell you a little bit officially about Lisa. She is an intuitive leadership mentor. She has been inspiring leaders to intentionally align with the forces and the rhythms of nature. Don't you just love that? Intentionally align with the forces and rhythms of nature. She loves sharing her secrets to help forward thinking visionaries dynamically increase their intuition and their creation abilities. She is on a mission to support entrepreneurs and leaders to master the skills of nature, nourished wisdom, and conscious business development in order to collectively create a more sustainable world. Oh my gosh, doesn't that sound um, fabulous? Fabulous. I want to hear more about it. Welcome, Lisa. <laughs> oh, Laura, it is such a delight to be with you here today. Oh my goodness. And hello to everybody watching. We're super excited to be sharing today. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. Well, um, you know, I just want to dive right into this piece around the rhythms and nature and this approach to business. It wasn't how I was going to start off. I was going to start off talking about more of your history. But it, to me, having come off of uh, attending a whole bunch of retreats in various nature all around the world and leading a couple of retreats, I just know like that is so incredibly important. And so I'm curious, how did this, tell me what it is, explain it, and then uh, we'll talk about how it came about. Actually, I am going to start with my history, which is where this really begins. Right. So uh, I, I was a ballet teacher and I had a 500 people ballet school. So I'd studied patterns and rhythms and how things, you know, work in the dance world for years and years. And I was kind of in between leaving the school and kind of what was next. And I was staying out in California, I was living in Georgia at the time with a spiritual mentor of mine. And I said to her one night before I went to sleep, I said, you know, I've been studying all these different things that as a dance teacher who understands patterns, I don't see how they fit together. So mm -hmm. I'd been studying, you know, nature-based spirituality. I'd been studying, you know, a vibration and sound and emotional work and you know, movement, like all these things. I'm like, how do they fit together? I woke up the next morning with an instantaneous download mm. that I'd been studying the elemental forces of creation and how they function in your consciousness. I've been studying earth path, water path, air path, fire path, and spirit. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's really interesting. I'm glad to know what it is. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> right. So then I'm like working with this for about six months for myself. And I mean, it's vast. I mean, these are the forces of creation. This is a huge body of work. And so about six months later, and this was in 1999, 
So we're talking a long time now here. Before your time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, and then I was like, I need to start teaching this, my guidance says. So I began teaching this body of work, and it literally was about taking people out into nature. But it's not just going out into nature. It is going out into nature and making a conscious connection. So when you're working with earth, you're like really connecting to the earth realm. You're really connecting to how the seasons flow to what her rhythms are to, and it's unique in a place. I mean, you're near the beach now. So how you connect to the, to the land where the beach is, is different to how you connect in the land of trees like Georgia. It's a little bit different. Yes. But how earth structure informs anything is also how earth functions in your physical body. Like your body is literally the container for your personal experience of those elemental forces. But also in your business, if you understand how earth works, if you understand her principles, if you know how to work with her, you know how to structure and form a business. You know how to structure and form a product. You know how to structure and form a podcast that you put out, a TV series, a retreat, because the capacity to structure and form works in the same way. And that's true for every element. For and every so element. I've for every element. So water's all about emotional flow. You know, you know as well as I do, if a business owner, emotions are out of sync with what she wants to create like if she's running some old childhood trauma mm -hmm. or or disappointment is one of the easy ones to get trapped in as a business owner that if you're just one that is very uh very popular so to speak very common very common the disappointment regrets that fear of disappointing yes and when that's the undercurrent of what you're creating on top of then you just get more of it mm -hmm. which is really difficult for people so they have to learn how to move through those feelings and consciously choose what emotional energy they want to magnetize from mm-hmm Right. So air's the mental realm. It's the vibration and sound and the marketing words we choose. You know, that's all got a tone to it. But, but air is invisible. You don't see it. So you don't understand the impact of how the vibrational message that you send across, like how that frequency is impacting what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And Fire is about how you build momentum, how you heat things up, how you stand in your visibility. And spirit is soul, just like you talk about with your business, Laura. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Doing your soul work is what is so important. So I've been working with all of those for a really long time. I just, I just love it. I find it fascinating. I've always found the elements fascinating in so many different ways. I remember having a uh, client and then she became a really good friend and she taught um, fashion feng shui and she brought in the five elements and you picked out your clothing based on your, your essence, knowing your essence, elemental essence and elemental intentions. And I can hear some of that in what you're talking about. And I think we need these lenses, right? These different ways yeah. of looking at business because Business, the world, I mean, as we know, the world is just changing so fast, so rapidly. Yep. And we yep. need some of these core ways of looking at how we show up in business and how we create our create, as you're talking about, um, in a different way, in a way that is, it feels more, you know, I can just feel like it feels more healthier and more wise and ancient rather than something new and trendy, you know? Right, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is when when people learn about the elements and how it's showing up, not showing up, how it's, you know, underneath driving their businesses, like what what's possible for them? Like what changes for them? Well, a lot of different things can change for them. One is 
as you work with the elements really consciously, you start to activate their powers and they have different powers that you can apply to whatever you're doing. I mean, earth is the ability, the first level power is the ability to stand on your own. That doesn't mean not in relation to other people, but as a business owner, feeling confident enough to stand on your own in the outer world and do business mm -hmm. is a huge is a huge thing. So working with the elements and applying their principles can make a, a very big difference in your results. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, each of the elements, and 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 we're going we're going just a little bit further out here. Each of the elements actually subdivides into archetypal energies, and so when you understand how those archetypal energies and how those elements work in your unique makeup, mm -hmm. it helps you to know what your innate prosperity powers are and how to alchemize those so that you're really bringing your special gifts to the forefront because not everybody's the same mm -hmm. not everybody creates abundance the same way it depends on are you a little bit more earthy or fiery have you got a lot of water or have you got a lot of air you know those things matter when it comes to choices that you're making in your business and how you're driving it forward, because it's not, it's not one size fits all. I, I, yes, I love what you're saying. You know, I'm so, um, I have just seen over the years, it's like the formulas, you know, they give you some structure to lean into, but they don't work for everyone. And what works for one person no. doesn't work necessarily for another person. And so we absolutely need ways of, you know, when we talk about being authentic, that's so common to talk about these days, being authentic in business. But like, what does that really mean? And what kind of permission do we need to give ourselves? Because it's going to look different for you than it does for me, even though we might have some similarities in our messages. It looks so wildly different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love that. And I'm really curious, like prosperity powers. Tell me about that. <laughs> what are prosperity powers? So, so seriously, I was actually even having a conversation with my husband about this this morning, because I've studied something called shamanic astrology for many, 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 many years. And I apply that to how somebody actually uses their, what I call their creation team. It's all those inner archetypal energies. Mm -hmm. Well, Based on what those energies are and how you actually work with them determines what your kind of prosperity power is. So I'm going to just take myself for mm -hmm. an example. I have a Virgo inner feminine. So Virgo is one of the three earth signs, which means I'm very... I'm very grounded, but I have lots of other energies. So when we talk about your creation team, we're talking about a group of inner archetypes. Right. But as a woman, if I am not fully aligned when I'm creating prosperity with that inner feminine energy, I am going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about it. And I said, you know, I really recognize that the times in my life when I really was in alignment with that energy, I had way more ease with prosperity flowing. Mm -hmm. When I got out of alignment with that, when I tried to follow some outer world things or work with a different part of who I am leading the way I got myself into more of a struggle mode right so coming back to that deep alignment so the way that this particular earth energy expresses is she is very in tune and aligned with the natural world but when it comes to financial flow this archetypal energy needs to be very detailed, very mindful. That's only one of 12 possible expressions of that. So somebody else 
if they try to be mindful, they're just going to be beating their head against the wall. So their prosperity power isn't found there or like isn't centered in that. And it also depends on what the other energies are that you actually carry in that group of archetypal energies. Mm, I love it. I love bringing in archetype and the energies and the elements and nature. It's like in the rhythms. You're speaking my language. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> yeah, this is great. And it's um, so different, you know, than, uh, you know, here's your funnel, here's your formula, go figure out the blueprint. All that, you know, can be helpful, but yeah. it, not to start there. Like if I learn that, that's the secret to success. To me, it's like the secret to success is here, you know, locked inside us <laughs> that we want to bring out. And I love that you have this unique way of being able to understand um, and work with your creation energies. Beautiful. Well, when you start there, when you start there, and when you start with knowing who you are and how you uniquely create prosperity, then you, when you apply things such as what level are you as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. then you can develop what kind of strategy is very clearly going to grow your business. But if you don't start there, right. then you're going to struggle with like trying to apply, like a lot of people try to apply a, a strategy where they're trying to scale long right. before they're ready to Way scale. before they even know who they are and who their people exactly. are. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. And it yeah. just like, you know, don't go put a product out in the world if nobody knows who you are yet. You're you're going to spend a lot of money and not make any money. Right, so right. You need a and, value strategy and not a leverage strategy. Sorry, yeah. what were you going to say? Yeah, no, I love that. I love that because I know um, what you're referring to are those different levels of being able to, you know, look at who you are and then where is your business, you know? And, and yep. to me, um, I hear you bringing them in as two entities, which I think is very important. Like it's like yourself, but then there is, where's your business? And I always talk about the soul of yep. your business and the practical, yep. where's your business? Um, so that you're using the right strategy, the right tool, just like you would exactly. when you're building a house, right? It's like the right exactly. tool for what it is you're trying to create. Exactly. So, very beautiful. Well, I hear so much um, like in-depth passion and commitment. And so I'm curious, how does, how is, um, how has that shown up for you in your life? Like how, because it's very obvious that you've wrapped your, your business, your life around following your passion, really being on purpose. And, you know, I'm curious what was, you know, have you always been like that? Or did that come up as a, as something happened or kind of what is your relationship with passion and purpose? Well, you know, I think I started off kind of stubbornly refusing to do anything I didn't like mm. so <laughs> I, I kind of have been connected to my passion I mean really my first successful business was that 500 people ballet school mm -hmm. and I mean I taught dance teachers and I developed syllabi for dance teachers like I did a lot of things in that world and then when I made the transition to doing personal development, I was still like committed to doing what I love. Right. So I did. Right. <laughs> and then it was like time. And we really met when I was in that window of like, I'm finished doing that in that way. Not that I like abandoned everything, but I'm complete with that. And now it's time for the first third iteration of what I'm going to do. What's that going to be? I didn't know for a long time. I was just following what I felt like brought me flow during that time. Where was I excited? What did I want to do? My passion. What yeah. is like tickling my fancy? And then all of those things came together with, yes, this body of work develops people and I want to see it out there. So I licensed a lot of that out to other people to facilitate those workshops I developed. And it's like, now I'm going to work with leaders and entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I really want to take all that I've learned from those two businesses and all I've learned with studying further as I went along and really help entrepreneurs and, and leaders take, and I say, and leaders, because there's some people that I've worked with and really made a difference for, they're working for other businesses 
they're not necessarily entrepreneurs, but they are definitely leaders. So that combination, right. sometimes they may own their own business and sometimes they may be working with others, but they're in a leadership position. And when they know themselves and they connect to their passion, they get to thrive and make a bigger and bigger impact in the world. Right, right. Yeah, I love this. You can hear your passion. And I love the evolution. That's something we talk about a lot is the evolution that it's so often we think we get the vision and that this is going to be the thing, you know, the end all be all thing. And it's, you know, life is a journey, you know, just our lives are journeys. So our business has a life too. And it, there is an evolution, like you said, of going from one, the ballet studio to um, the personal work, the personal growth work, personal development work to now helping leaders and visionaries and entrepreneurs. So absolutely. um, Yeah. Um, and I just absolutely love the, the rebel that shows up that says, you know, I've just always done what I love, <laughs> you know, I can't help it. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And, you know, it's not true. everybody has that mentality. Most of the people who are watching this though, they're like, yay, they love to hear someone who's successful and see someone who's successful. And that's what, you know, cause that's what I do. It's like, I can't not do that. You know, I've spent too many years in corporate where I was kind of doing what I loved, but not in an environment that I loved. And, um, and so then, yeah, entrepreneurship is kind of that right environment to have that creativity and freedom. Yeah. Absolutely. And I've been steeped in creativity and freedom all, almost my entire working career. I never actually went into corporate. There's been times when I was like, maybe I should have at least done it. So I would have a reference point that I never did. Yeah, <laughs> Except yeah. for early on, you know, when I check groceries in a grocery, you know, in a grocery store, I don't really think that counts. But <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, so I'd love to hear some things. You know, one of the things we talk about is um, conscious business, you know, and conscious marketing strategies and, um, you know, be really intentional, you know, not just following what the latest trend is in growing your business and marketing your business, but really like what works for, you know, we're talking about what works for you, but I'm curious about how do you apply that towards marketing and like for your own business, you know, what works for you and how do you apply conscious marketing uh, ideas to that? It's a really, really big and good question. So I've done both things. I really have. And and what I've finally come to to really know is that no matter what choices you make around conscious marketing, they have to center first from your heart. Like Mm -hmm. if it doesn't come from your soul and your heart, you're out of alignment and people feel that like they know that and they are not attracted to that and there's like you can market and say all of the words you want to but it won't make any difference yes to me that feels like the work (laughs) you know it is the work the the creative work is on connecting to my heart and soul and like how do I express that um versus the uh let me study the right way you know because it it just falls in deaf ears and and I'm gonna take dance as an example here because if you are a trained dancer that means you've learned skills about how to structurally move in a particularly coordinated way Mm -hmm. that's what learning entrepreneurial skills can help you to do right but if you're only a technician as a dancer and you don't dance from your soul there's no life in it. Mm. And you could just be a free form dancer and just like express your soul all day long. But if you don't have any structural form that those additional entrepreneurial skills can help you to do, you might hit your target once in a while, but you mm-hmm. don't know how to consistently hit your target. 
which is kind of the same thing as go up on one leg and turn around five times. You know, uh -huh. that takes time to learn to do. Right. So I, I think it's really this great balance between having that soul connection and some skills. Yes. And not just skills and no connection. Yes. And not just they the strategy, skills. Yeah without the heart and the creative expression. No, right, I mean. exactly. Because yeah. yeah. then nothing happens too. Yeah. So I both are important. It's the outer and the inner for sure. I love that. I love that. I believe that too. It's like we need soul and strategy together. Um, <laughs> soul and strategy, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, one without the other. It's like it doesn't work. And I, I love that okay. example of the dancer. We can so get, I can get that visual in my my head. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah. So I would love to hear um, so many things I want to ask, but I'm curious about your own um, way that you connect. You, know, you talked at the beginning about guidance led you here. Guidance said this to you. So I'm curious, what are your ways of connecting with guidance? You know, what, you know, what works for you? I you know it's different for different people, but I love to share I love to share different examples because it gives people permission to realize um, there's different ways to access that guidance and that that belongs in business, right? Yeah, yeah. So for me, and I'll talk about nature in just a minute because that's a that's a key component. But I really did a process in 1997 that helped me develop my intuition really powerfully. And I facilitated that same process for years and years and years. I, I decided to activate the archetype of the priestess within in 1997. One of the most significant things I've ever done made the most difference in deepening my intuition. Mm. That intuition functions on all of those same levels that I was talking about earlier with the LML forces. There's physical intuition. There's emotional intuition. Mm. There's mental intuition, ideas that you can use in your business. There's action intuition, knowing when is the right time to act. When is the time that you instinctively feel to take something to the marketplace? Their soul intuition, like my soul is calling to bring this forth right now. Mm -hmm. So I tap into those different levels of intuition when I'm working. And when I'm just getting my life guidance too, I mean, I'm not just talking about just business, but my life and my businesses have been so interwoven that yes. kind of speaking to one speaks to the other a lot of the time. But I spend time in nature. Uh, like just the other day, I went out and it's like, I just have to sit on the ground for a while. Mm -hmm. And so I just laid there, sat there, and I'm telling you, it made such a difference to the rest of my day. Just, I didn't like do anything. I didn't like write in my journal, which I often do. I just sat and laid. But sometimes I garden. Sometimes, sometimes one of the best things I can do to get guidance is go pull weeds. Right. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah. So it's a combination sort of repetitive, mindless, but yep. getting your hands dirty and getting in nature. Yes, yep. it makes such a difference. Yeah. I mean, even going for a walk, like a lot of times I'll take a piece of paper and a pen and go off on a walk. And because I work with the living field of creation that flows to the natural world, like I open for that. I'll take a question out there and go for a walk and just start walking, like you mm -hmm. say, the re repetitive motion, and then I'll get like, okay, here's the answer, here's the that answer, one. here's the answer, yeah, 
So well, I will see you on that walk with my piece of paper and pen as well. <laughs> We're doing my notes in my phone. Um, yep, yep. Because it does, it comes. It, it does. It absolutely when does. You're outside. It's To me, it's like the wisdom of our business, the answers we seek, the solutions yeah, are there. Lord. Yeah, it's connecting. So I love that. Love that. Thank you yep. for sharing that. Well, there's so much I would love to continue talking about. I know that those who are um, listening and watching would love to know more. Can you tell them a little bit, like, how do they find out more about you? Well, they can go to my website, lisa-michaels.com, and there's a download gift about, you know, connecting your intuition to all these realms I just talked about. So you can download that and stay connected. And I'd I'd love to hear that you saw me on Laura's show so I can pass it along and tell her. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. So great. Thank you so, so much for coming today and just being your brilliant, beautiful self and sharing what is truly, you can tell, is your soul work um, with everyone. And I just, um, yeah, I just adore what you're up to and I love your unique approach and um, just know how valuable it is. So it's incredible. Thank you, Laura. It's great to be here with you today. Yeah, great. Well, we're going to wrap up for today. And thank you all for being here at Joyful Business TV. And stay tuned for next week and our next episode.